What's harder to complete, reading a non-fiction book or completing a thousand-piece puzzle? Depending on your abilities and experience, you might have a different answer than the person next to you or your significant other. You use different skills to complete each task, and unfortunately, one set of skills is often valued higher than another when you're taking tests for school or to get certain jobs. People with high perceptual reasoning abilities, for example, may take a puzzle over a non-fiction book any day, and while their ability to complete a puzzle fast may not be the one skill that gets them into college, perceptual reasoning is crucial to solving many everyday problems. So what is perceptual reasoning? Perceptual reasoning is the ability to take in visual information and organize it, interpret it, and use it to solve problems. No verbal communication is required. If you're solving a problem that requires you to visualize the solution in your head, you're using perceptual reasoning. Perceptual reasoning abilities can make life a lot easier. You could be looking at a map in a different language, but with high perceptual reasoning abilities, you may May be able to get from point A to point B without having to know the street names. People with high perceptual reasoning abilities may prefer to learn by doing or learn through visual aids. Rather than hearing the directions, it's usually easier to see them. You might have high perceptual reasoning abilities if you can take a computer apart and put it back together, read a map or find your way around a neighborhood without assistance, estimate the distance between two objects with ease, assemble furniture quickly, or draw and paint well. You can test and build your perceptual reasoning skills by playing with puzzles, including including 3D puzzles, learning origami, challenging your friend or a computer to a game of chess, building a model airplane, playing a video game like Tetris, using a physical map to get around a new city, communicating with a friend without words, or trying a new sport or physical practice. You may be considered intelligent if you can assemble furniture without minimal help. You may also be considered intelligent if you can read a book and put together a report on that book. And while educational standards may tell you that one of these skills is more important, they are still both valid types of of intelligence. A few different educational psychologists have created theories around the idea of multiple intelligences. In 1938, Lewis Thurnstone wrote that intelligence did not just come from one general ability. He listed seven primary mental abilities, including verbal comprehension, perceptual speed, and spatial visualization. Howard Gardner has provided a more up-to-date theory on multiple intelligences. Gardner listed a set of eight intelligences, including visual-spatial intelligence and verbal linguistic intelligence. The work of these psychologists and others have influenced the way that we measure intelligence and qualify someone as advanced or deficient in some areas. One of the ways we measure intelligence is through the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale, the WAIS. The Perceptual Reasoning Index Scale is one of the four subtests of the current WAIS. This scale is an IQ test given to adults to measure their intelligence and cognitive abilities. WAIS 4, the current version of the test, is the first First version that includes a perceptual reasoning scale. In earlier versions of the WAIS, perceptual reasoning was called perceptual organization. To measure perceptual reasoning, participants are given three to five tasks. The first is block design. Participants are given a model in a book constructed from red and white blocks. The participant must recreate the model using the blocks under a time constraint. The second is matrix reasoning, where participants are given a set of pictures with one missing picture. Then they are given a set of five additional pictures. Out of those five pictures, the participant must choose the missing picture. Next is visual puzzles, wherein participants look at a puzzle in a book. Then they are given a set of individual pieces. They choose which of those pieces would fit in the puzzle. Another is picture completion, which is similar to the visual puzzles task, but in this task, participants must choose an image that completes a picture. The last option is figure weights. Participants are shown a picture of a scale with a set of shapes or images on one side of the scale. They choose from a set of images or shapes to balance out the scale. Perceptual reasoning tests, along with working memory, verbal comprehension, and processing speed tests, create a participant's general ability index and full-scale IQ scores. So how do we interpret WAIS 4 scores? Children who score low in all of these areas may be diagnosed with conditions like ADHD or autism spectrum disorder. Interestingly enough, children with high-functioning forms of these conditions often score very high on perceptual reasoning tests. While you may be able to find blocks on an IQ test, you might not see them in the classroom past preschool. College admissions officers don't require students to put together puzzles in order to be accepted. Our current education system values verbal reasoning over perceptual reasoning. Tests ask you to read and write before they ask you to construct a photo or find the missing puzzle piece. But verbal linguistic intelligence is just one form of intelligence, according to Howard Gardner. And according to Lewis Thurnstone, verbal comprehension and word fluency are just 
just two skills that contribute to overall intelligence. With today's testing, a student with high verbal comprehension skills may be considered highly intelligent even if they have little perceptual reasoning abilities. Conversely, a student with visual and spatial intelligence may not get the same praise or recognition if they suffer on verbal and linguistic tests. But, as you heard earlier in the video, these skills are crucial to solving certain problems and being successful in specific fields. You won't always be given verbal directions. There are a lot of problems that you will need to solve by doing them, or through acting. So don't let a standardized test based on one type of intelligence tell you that you aren't intelligent, or that you're more intelligent than someone else. Everyone has different abilities and holds different types of intelligence. Use a test like WAIS-4 to get a bigger picture of your intelligence. As you discover where your strengths lie, you will be able to find the best ways to learn and solve problems in your unique way. That's all for today. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. We really hope you found it helpful, and most of all, we hope to see you in our next video.